We'll go to John in Sheridan, Wyoming, Republican line. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I want to thank you, first of all, for being there today. And the thing that concerns me is twofold. Number one, there are a number of Republican candidates who, like Ron Paul, say that they're pro-life. Yet, unlike Ron Paul, these other neocon Republicans uh, can't wait to get us into yet another war and another war and another war with countries who have never attacked the United States at any time in our 235-year history. The second thing that disturbs me is these fraudulent polls that keep coming out trying to play down the popularity of Ron, Ron Paul. Think back to the 1984 presidential election when the same expert pollster said that uh, Walter Mondale and Geraldine Ferraro were just going to annihilate Reagan and Bush. Whatever happened to those predictions? Okay, thanks for the call. We'll go to Justin next, Democrats line from Kentucky. Go ahead, Justin. A lot of activity here. Kind of loud, but we can hear you. Go ahead. Definitely, sir. Um, I think I may be the only liberal in a small eastern Kentucky coal mining town, and, you know, I strongly supported uh, President Obama in 08, and I feel like everything he said in 08, he's done the opposite since he took office, you know, and, and I, I don't really feel like I could vote for any other Republican aside from um, Congressman Paul because, you know, I'm, I'm really, really strongly pro-liberty. I think you should be allowed to do whatever you want as long as you're not bothering anybody. And, and second, you know, his policies haven't changed in... 76 years? Is it 76 years old? You know, um, I just feel like that, that you, at least you, you, you know what you're getting with the guy. You know, you can't, you can't, you can't really go back and say, well, he's, he's, he's flip-flopped on really anything, or he's, he said one thing and took one position and voted another way. So I just feel like, I never thought I'd say this, but, you know, I guess I'm a libertarian or something, you know? Thank you, sir. Teresa is one of the, uh, few people here actually from Iowa, a lot of folks in attendance are being bussed in, participants are watching the process from different universities, but you're participating in the caucuses tomorrow night. First of all, your last name is? Urison. And what did you take away from today's event with Senator, what did you take away from today's event with Congressman Paul? Oh, I just, his message is so right on and I think we need a leader like him because in my opinion this country is going in the wrong direction. Can Ron Paul get the nomination? I would hope he would. The only way he will, though, is through getting the word out. And the media has not been a great help to him. Actually, most of my information I get from the Internet. And um, it, to me, the media, last week it was who? Newt Gingrich. And now this week it's all about Santorum. And I'm... I just do not agree with um, the fact that, um, oh, what am I trying to say, um, that the media just totally ignores him and his message though is the only one that can even try to turn our country around because otherwise we're just, we're all going to be doomed. What is your role tomorrow night? Where will you caucus and how will you be involved? I am uh, going to fill in one of the chairs at one of the caucus sites at Roosevelt High School in Des Moines. And um, I'm on my way right now to Ankeny to the headquarters to find out all what I need to do tomorrow night. But I'm definitely going to be there and um, like I said, it, to me he's the only answer. and. Another problem with it is, is people say, well, he can't uh, do both sides of the party or both sides of the Congress, but yet he has in, like, auditing the Fed. And we do not need to be the policemen of the world. Why are we in all these silly police actions? Why are they sending to Australia troops to defend us against China when we have to borrow money from China to defend ourselves from China? It makes no sense. Teresa, thanks very much. You sound like many of our viewers who phone in on C-SPIN. We appreciate it. I'm glad. I'm glad. Go Ron Paul. Thanks for your time.
Back to your phone calls. Again, we're in downtown Des Moines, Iowa with uh, the Ron Paul campaign. Many people still sticking around. A lot of media one day before the caucuses. We are covering two caucuses, one in central Iowa, another in the western part of Iowa. You can watch one here on C-SPAN, another live on C-SPAN 2. And next up is Jack joining us from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Good afternoon to you, Jack. Yes, I have a comment, first of all, about auditing the Fed. Those of us, of us that really understand financial matters understand that the, the upcoming financial crisis is the biggest threat to our national security. That all goes back to the Fed. Now, secondly, I've heard every other candidate in the Republican race talking about the capability of Iran to get a nuclear weapon. Isn't that really a good point? Because most of us know that Israel would, would never allow Iran to get a nuclear weapon, and they would, in fact, uh, attack them before that happened. That's all I have. Thanks for the call. We're not only taking your calls and also checking with folks here, including Wise Cup family from uh, outside of Des Moines, Iowa. Introduce your wife and daughter. Uh, this is my wife, Sherry, and my daughter, Emily. Why are you here today? Um, we're here to let uh, Emily see uh, the candidates. Uh, she hasn't had a chance to get out. Me and Sherry have been out um, with some of the candidates, and we just wanted to get her out, too. So, Emily, as you watch this process, by the way, you're in high school, college, how old are you? Yep, I'm in high school. I just turned 18 in September. So what are your thoughts about this process as a new voter in 2012? It's very exciting. I didn't realize that it was going to be so crazy, I guess. And what did you take away from Ron Paul's speech here today? That he wants to give us back our individual liberties. Are you a Ron Paul supporter? Not yet. I'm still undecided. Have you made up your mind? Nope, I'm still undecided. I want to see what all the candidates have to say. And how about you? I'm still undecided. Um, yesterday I was torn between uh, Santorum and Gingrich. Today I'm torn between Santorum and Ron Paul. When will you make up your decision? When I talk with my neighbors. And let me ask you about the process, because many people who don't live in Iowa see what you have here. You're literally going from campaign event to campaign event. So if you could explain what it's been like for you to watch this process on the front line. It's pretty exciting. You get to see them up close. Uh, sometimes you get asked questions. It's, um, this is a little crazy today <laughs> with too, so much media. It's very crowded. Yeah, it's very crowded. But this is my first time doing these things, too. So I don't know what it's like normally. So is this like a high school civics 101 or a political science? Actually, I took government last year, and I'm taking college classes for history right now. So no extra credit today. Yeah. But <laughs> There's no school today. Yeah. No. Nope. Uh, there was one reason is we actually got a chance. We're, uh, we're working people, and we can't get out. Final, final, final question for both of you. And are you going to participate tomorrow, tonight, tomorrow night in the caucuses? So when will you make up your decision, and what will uh, allow you to finalize your decision? It'll probably be down to the last minute. I mean, maybe it'll be around the kitchen table. Maybe it'll be with our neighbors. Yep, that's what I'm thinking, too. I want to hear what everybody has to say. Me, too. Yep, we're all undecided. We're at 41% of the Des Moines Register poll. The Wise Cup family from uh, here in Iowa, thanks very much for being with us. Continue with your phone calls. Next up is Dorothy joining us from Clinton Township, Michigan, our line for Republicans. Dorothy, thanks for waiting. Go ahead, please. Good, good afternoon. Uh, it excites me so much to see so many people there. I've been watching this vigorously, listening to Michelle Bachman, Newt Gingrich. If I could do anything to get a message out, I would say don't vote for Gingrich. He's a globalist, and he, he might be a great speaker and everything, but his policies will just fall right behind Barack Obama's. Ron Paul has got so much respect from so many people, and the media are, is untruthful, they're biased, and they do anything to black him out. And like the one woman said, Teresa, uh, I get most of my information from the Internet, and I'm about her age, I would say. And so it's not only the young people, it's not only the Army people, military people, people like myself who are, you know, middle-aged, I guess you could call me. We're throwing our support behind Ron Paul. So Ron Paul is the only last best hope we have for our country, to get back, to make things right, because we are just headed down the tubes, if not for Ron Paul. Thank you very much.
Thanks for the call. I want to introduce you to uh, Patrick Clark and Cameron Perrin. We ran into these students in Oskaloosa, Iowa. They were part of a caravan that came in from Taylor High School in Cincinnati, Ohio. So you left Saturday morning at 7 o'clock, met up with Rick Santorum at that late afternoon event on Saturday. What did you see yesterday and what are your thoughts about Ron yeah. Paul today? The Nate Greenridge yesterday. Today was today was a totally different experience from the other Republicans that we went and saw. I feel like Ron Paul is totally different, independent of the Republican Party at this point. In some regards, a conservative candidate, I'd say, but at the same time is looking for reforms now. And I found that pretty admirable about him, that he would go out on a limb and, and do his own thing. I have to ask you, what a neat experience to be in high school, to leave Ohio, to come here to Iowa. How did this all come about, and what have you learned over the last couple of days? Well, I heard about the trip, kind of excited me. Yeah, I thought I might want to come out and see what the caucus is all about and how it works and everything. And I've learned a lot about the candidates for this future election that I'm going to be able to vote in. It's like, um, it's been a really interesting process to see all the different candidates come out and try to get uh, support before the caucuses and uh, leading up to the caucuses. I never really knew so much went on in Iowa before or leading up to the caucuses. I mean, you see everything on TV, but you never really get a feel for it until you come out here. It's a really interesting experience. Interested in public office yourself? Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I mean, I have a lot of support for Ron Paul, but... Um, Honestly, no, I'm not looking to go into politics or anything, really. but this is, this is still a neat experience, yeah. though. Cameron and Patrick from Taylor High School in Cincinnati, Ohio. You guys came in on Saturday. You go back to Ohio on Wednesday. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Jeff, patiently on the line from San Francisco. Go ahead, please. Hi there. Uh, I'm a Democrat, and I really like Ron Paul. Uh, I really like what he says about civil liberties and restoring civil liberties. I like what he talks about bringing the troops home, which I thought Obama was going to do before he was elected on a campaign trail. So what I'm doing is I'm changing my registration just this year for Republican, and that's so I can help uh, get uh, Ron Paul nominated. And then I'm going to register back to Democrat after I vote for Ron Paul in the primaries. Next is John joining us from Des Moines, Iowa. Go ahead, please. Uh, yes, uh, this is ahead, John, John, and I am uh, 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 independent, but changing mine to uh, Republican just to vote for Ron Paul because other candidates will send us to doomsday, and I really believe that other candidates who are pro-war, they must, they must promise the American public that they will send their own sons and daughters or nephews and nieces to war. If they go to war, they should send their loved ones to war instead of other poor people we send to war. So I could change my uh, party just to vote, if the Republican, just to vote for Ron Paul. He is my candidate. Thank you. John, thanks for the call. Our partners here in Iowa, the Des Moines Register and the CBS affiliate, KCCI, we have links available on our website at cspan.org slash campaign 2012. Again, continuing coverage all day into the evening here on C-SPAN. Tomorrow night, live coverage both here on C-SPAN and C-SPAN 2 of the caucuses. The only network that will show you the caucuses in their entirety. We'll also have the speeches by the winners and losers. And then on to New Hampshire, January 10th is the New Hampshire primary, followed by South Carolina and Florida. And so all of this is part of C-SPAN. Pans wrote of the White House coverage. Some of the latest ads now on the air, including from the Ron Paul campaign with an eye towards the New Hampshire primary a week from tomorrow. America is in trouble. Washington is a disgrace. Government has become too big. It's overtaxing, overspending. We need to change direction. We really need change. We can't afford to make the same mistakes we've made in the past. Mitt Romney's reputation as a flip-flopper. He went the other way when he got paid to go the other way. There is need for economic stimulus. It's about serial hypocrisy. This election is about trust. There's been one true consistent candidate, and that's Dr. Ron Paul. Ron Paul has been so consistent from the very beginning. 
Kennedy, he seems like a more honest candidate. He tells the truth about what he believes, whether you like it or not. He's never once voted for a tax increase, never once voted for an unbalanced budget. Ron Paul's plan is bold, cuts five departments. It's what we need. When he says he's going to cut a trillion dollars in the first year, I believe it. If you don't like how things are going and you're tired of politicians, he's something different. Ron Paul. Ron Paul. Ron Paul. Ron Paul. Is the one we've been looking for. I'm Ron Paul, and I approve this message.